Dr. Spice a morning for today, the 27th day of November. I'll tell you what, folks, uh, the police officers have been to the studio and all of a sudden it's beginning to feel a lot like Christmas. <laughs> they are bringing to us a lot of good news. They have uh, put some nice Christmassy flyers in my hand here. And the Christmas vibe is, is really beginning to just seep into the studio. Welcome, uh, gentlemen. Good morning. Thank it's you nice for to us have in. you all here today. Thank you. I'll tell you what, because I didn't know exactly who was coming, um, if you can just tell me what the names are, just a brief thing about each person. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, my name is Alan James, a sergeant of the police. I'm a member of the police award committee. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm Randy Connaught, inspector of police, chairman of the Police Welfare Association, and also the chairman or the lead person with the Police Award Ceremony 2013. Okay. All right. And I'm Inspector Brian Hurst and I'm the bandmaster, so I'm here to talk about Christmas Brass 5, right. which is going to be on December 1st, Sunday oh. coming. Okay, fabulous. So I'm going to start with you because you are closest to me. Um, the Royal Grenada Police Force Annual Award and Retirement Ceremony, in fact, not too long ago, the ministry right here, they had a, a annual award and retirement ceremony right here at the ministry, so I'm kind of familiar with that. So give us the details about your award ceremony, how long it's, it's, it's something that's been going on for a few years now? Yes, but I prefer Lady Chairman speak on that party. Okay. Yes. yes. Right. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We are into our fifth award ceremony because um, over the years, the previous chairman of the Welfare Association has to recognize and to emulate persons who would have done exceedingly well over the year on the review. And the idea went well. Actually, it's been done under the auspices of the Commission of Police. Mm -hmm. And we would have done so for the past four years. And this year, we'll be celebrating under the theme, celebrating a legacy of excellence. Um, we thought it fitting, a fitting tribute to, to, to lead under this theme because of the fact that um, officers would have done exceedingly well over the past year. And we have to also recognize the retirees would have left a legacy before and we ones coming up or those who are in line now must continue that legacy because of course we are in a noble institution and we have to bring the high standards of prof professionalism so we thought it best to celebrate honor this team for this year's celebrations now i indicated it is under the auspices of the commission of police so though the welfare association is organizing and executing the event but it is done in the name of our commissioner the event will be held on Saturday the 7th of December at the Grenada Trade Center. Traditionally, it has been that way. Mm -hmm. Before we go into the details in terms of the place and all of that, let's go back so that our viewers have a better understanding okay, of what well, this yeah. event is all about. Um, does it have something to do with people who have retired a long time ago? Or is it every year there are police officers who are retiring, so you're ha having this ceremony to... To, to give them an award, or is it retired people that's been, you know, out of the force for a while, you call them back and, and give them an award and okay. that type of thing? Persons who would have retired with, under the, within the year on the review, mm -hmm. they that would be recognized as the retirees. Okay. Um, we don't step back beyond one year. Retroactively? Uh, yeah, we don't do that, <laughs> yeah. unfortunately. So, but um, uh -huh. we, we had a start four years ago, and we believe um, from then forth, we can address all those areas of concerns that maybe was not addressed over the years. And it is going down well with the retirees because this is something that they look forward to, I can tell you. Um, there was a gentleman who I was looking for some time to, uh, actually a retiree, to give him his invitation. And he said, listen, when is the thing? And then I said, well, I was looking for you. And then he said, oh, okay, I will be there. And they always look forward to, those, to this occasion because it, this is a highlight of the departure from the force. Even if they would have retired earlier, but they look forward to that moment when they will be recognized by their, their peers and it is something that actually places them on a pinnacle. So you leave on a high and this is what we want to continue to emulate as a welfare association. Mm -hmm. As I indicated, it is a two-pronged event so we recognize the retirees and also for the persons who would have done exceedingly different categories because Alan would speak to you of the varying ca categories and um, what it takes to be um, able to cop that prestigious award. All right. So we're going to get back to the dates and that type of thing. We leave people with that fresh in their memory. Yeah, okay. So let's go to the, the, the categories of um, the awards. Okay. We have um, 
uh, eight categories of awards. Uh, what, what will normally happen is that um, the Welfare Association is the, is the department heading the award ceremony. So what will happen, we'll send out um, notices to the various station and the branch, branches, to the various heads, so that they can um, nominate various persons under the command. You know, you know, they could have more than one nominees. And what would happen after they do that, they will, start, they will send the nominations to the staff office at police headquarters. And then we have a committee which is headed by Superintendent Francois, who is going to sit and deliberate on the nominees and will decide who are the person who will be awarded in the various categories. Has it been controversial over the years? Well, no, I think in, in that way, I think it, it has been fair because seeing that members of the award committee has no interaction as to who is nominated. They just submit we just a submit list it. of yes. awardees. awardees. Definitely. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So the, the hierarchy of the they are the ones that sit and deliberate and decide who are the persons that should be awarded. So the Welfare Association has no part to play in who is being awarded. Okay? Um, there are a number of various awards. There are operational um, areas of awards. Um, there are certain stations and branches that have operational bases, especially like Coast Guard, um, SSU, places like that. And they fall under that category, operational awards. Then we have an, another category called Police Stations Award. Um, this year is the third year we've been having it um, within the award ceremony. Before in the past, we used to normally award somebody, one person from each division. But we, had, we decided that um, the sponsor felt that you know a lot of officers have been left out, so he decided that we're going to award one person from every, the most outstanding officer from every police station. So that's a new category that was included. And we have 14 police stations, so 14 officers from every police station will be awarded. Then we have another category called investigative awards, meaning persons that work in CID and the criminal record office, you know. One person from each of these departments will be awarded. Then we have support services award, because there are departments within the organization that provide that kind of support. We have the ICT department, we have um, police headquarters, police finance, um, community relations department. This, this department falls under the support services um, area of awards. Fourteen departments within that category will be awarded. Then within the organization, sports plays a very integral part within the, within the force. So we have a category for sports award. The most of money, netballer, footballer, cricket, table tennis, you know. So eight, eight persons within that category will be awarded. Then within the welfare organization, there are persons that made, a, that made I mean, contribution to the welfare association, either police or civilian. So eight persons within the category will be awarded, on the, which is called welfare awards. Then we have nine major awards, which will highlight um, the, the department um, that um, against serious crime, the department, the most proactive department. Um, then you have the policeman of the year, policewoman of the year, and the commissioners award for bravery. So under this category, you had the major awards, and normally the highlight of the award is most 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 time it's man and policewoman of the year. Oh. This is the most coveted award. I would, I would have yeah. liked to see the one for bravery men, see some police officer chasing yes. some criminal yes. across the yeah. town <laughs> and catching them. <laughs> but, over the past years, we, we have some good submission. I mean, we don't really listen to what really happened. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. yeah, there are yeah. some really, really brave officers out there. Yes, 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 yes. Right. Is there anything you'd like to add to that? Save an exec that um had religiously over the years a number of persons, corporate citizens coming on board to assist us to ensure that the, the final product is of a very high quality. Um, the platinum sponsor that is uh, the, the, yeah. the firm that has contributed to ensure religiously over, over the years that we stage the event is the Grenada Trade Center, Mr. Martin Bido. He has always been on board with us actually. When September comes around, he gives us the constant reminders to let us know the time is coming up, what are we doing this year, what is the new theme, what is the theme, um, how we, if we are just changing the concept a little bit. And things have been going well with Mr. Martin Bido over the years, and we continue to enjoy a very healthy relationship with him. Um, there are a number of other businesses um, for policemen and policewomen of the year. Um, Grenlick over the years has secured that area of awards, and I doubt they would be ever giving it up because. They are very receptive when it comes to the invitation and request for sponsorship. Um, there are many other sponsors on board this year. I just don't want to leave out any island is a mine who may have uh, <laughs> have it locked at the back of his hand. But the hotels, I know, um, we have Spice in. Yes. Um, they have already given the indications and already given the token for 
special department. I do just don't want to name the department because spicy. When you think about spicy, you know what to expect from them. Exactly. And, um, <laughs> we have so, um, we have um, Hankis Computer Services. Yeah. They've been on board for the last five years. We have Disput Shop. Yeah. We have um, um, insurance consultants. Sort of, yeah. We have Fast Cash. We have Digicel. We have, we have Leslie's Agency Custom Brokerage. We have Brighton and Miners. We have Grenada Distillers. Um, there, there's a number of other um, sponsors. Name, name it, they're all on board. They're all on yes, board. Yes, Everybody, yes, and we're really yes. grateful for that. And they're yeah. quite smart. Who wouldn't yeah. want to support the Royal Grenada Police Force? Yes, uh, <laughs> uh, and we appreciate the support in every yes, respect. Yes. Okay, we're going to get back to the dates and the events. As I said, um, I want to leave it really fresh in people's minds. So it's one of the last things that we're going to do. Uh, let's just move over to... Um, Mr. Brian Hurst, and he's going to tell us about Christmas Brass 5. It's an event that has been going on for the last four years. This year is its fifth year. That's correct. And I must say, I attended one of those events before, and um, I was quite impressed. Great. It's happening for the fifth time, and I know you have a lot to share with us. The floor is yours. <laughs> Thank you. Let me say good morning to everyone listening, and um, Christmas Day is going to be on Sunday, December 1st at the Spice Basket from 5 in the afternoon, and we're looking forward to a pack house. Mm -hmm. We have a wonderful cast of performers singing and both playing instruments, and um, we're going to be having a good time on stage. So you know what, before you tell us about the date and the time and the venue, man, tell us about Christmas Brass 5. Um, <laughs> there are people, we can't take it for granted that everybody know about this event. We have people who are returning home or who are home to spend time with their families. They would have never experienced it. There are people, visitors who have decided to spend Christmas here. Remember this show is uh, it's going global these days. You know, we're on the World Wide Web, all kinds of things. People are coming home. They want to know what they can actually um, participate in while they're here. So give us some nitty gritty, man. Get us excited about All this right. event. <laughs> well, Christmas Brass was born out of the need for us to raise some funds because we wanted to do something for ourselves. We realized that most police bands and military bands in the region have the support of the government or other entities that support them in traveling to spread their music throughout the world. And we are strapped in Grenada for financial resource, and we realized that we don't have that kind of backing. So we were willing to put something together, a project, where we can raise some funds and at the same time bring music to the people around Christmas time. Just so only to our local people, but to foreigners visiting, because I know people personally that come to Christmas Brass every year once they're here visiting. I know a few people from England, actually. And every Christmas brass, they're there, present, mm -hmm. you know, and I speak to them online and stuff like that and make sure we have their support and they always come and every once in a while they bring friends along. So it was born out of that need and we decided that we're going to try to do this every year. It's a lot of work. The preparation is tough. Mm -hmm. Making the selections is not very easy because, you know, we only have so many Christmas songs. This year we're going to play some tunes that are not Christmas songs which is very exciting and it's different and it's nice. Mm -hmm. um, so basically it was born out of that need and we're hoping to develop the product and be able to take it outside of Grenada eventually because wherever we decide to go when that time comes, we're going to play the appropriate music and try to put Grenada on the map or keep it on the map a matter of fact mm -hmm. and re-establish ourselves with new audiences around the world so people can get excited about Grenada and the police band and the police force mm -hmm. and eventually come to our shows. Exactly. Tell us about the people who've been uh, supportive of, of that event because I know the Spice Basket, it may not necessarily be a free venue, um, but I'm sure he would have offered some support. I see you have people like Nether. Tell us about your, your sponsors. Well, first, um, mm -hmm. we have the support of the Commissioner of Police. We always have his blessings. And um, my superiors and uh, Richard Strawn, who is a big supporter and very avid musician, an accomplished musician. He supports us to the point where more than 50% of the expense is borne by him. And we really appreciate his effort and his, um, his contribution. Then we have the support of Spice Basket. 